The four seed, Alabama. The 13 seed, Charleston. Our city. Pat Kelsey. Nate Oates. There's a lot of fun, entertaining things in this game. Uh, my number one note for this game is that Alabama currently doesn't have the number one offense in the country, and that surprised me. I thought it was just like automatic that a Nate Oates offense gets to be number one all season, no matter what happens. Apparently, they've dropped the spot down to number two. Uh, what do you make of this matchup? There will be absolutely zero defense played. <laughs> absolutely so gonna, zero. So I'm going to have fun watching it. That's what you're telling me. <laughs> absolutely zero defense played. Uh, Charleston has a, a really, really good offense, a really fun offense, uh, top 60 in the country, but they're 176 defensively. Like, not good, according to Ken Palm. Well, Alabama, over their last 10 games, is 231st in the country in defensive efficiency. Oh. Like, as bad as you think Alabama's defense has been during this slide that they've been on, it's been worse. <laughs> it's been worse. Uh, but the offense has been good, and it's why they've been able to win some games during this stretch. So uh, I fully, fully expect this game to be up and down. A lot of threes taken um, first to 90, 95 wins. Wow. Um, yeah, I I hope that's what we get. I think it's possible for sure. True TV, why not? 7.35 p.m. on hey. Friday. What else could we be doing? It sound, sounds fantastic. Uh, okay, here's my fear. Uh, I, I'm just okay. going to lay out my, my general stance and what I believe here, and then uh, you can tell me if I'm right, wrong, whatever you think here. I want to fade Alabama so hard. On paper, I don't believe in this team. I've talked about it all season long. Uh, I I want to make sure I'm saying the number correctly here, but I believe they are one and eight against Ken Palm top twenty eight opponents. Two and nine if you if you round up and include the Florida games that they've played. Um, they they just have played a bunch of teams that are very good at basketball and lost like all of them. Like at yeah. their own their only win that matters at all is Auburn at home and Florida at home in overtime. And they lost to Florida twice outside of that. They got blitzed by Auburn on the road. I mean, even go back to the non-con, like this team had a stretch where they lost five of seven, including games against Ohio State and Clemson, and then just spent the entire season in the top five on Ken Palm anyway, for God knows what reason, because they blow out bad teams. That was it, right? They they beat right. South Alabama 102 to 46. So... I think we've gotten to the end of the season and as SEC play bared itself out and you saw this team have to play Kentucky and Tennessee and Florida and Auburn, you saw that they can't hang against the best teams on their schedule. Now, the thing is, Charleston isn't the best team on their schedule. Charleston is rated lower than many of the teams that Alabama had struggled with. In fact, I think all of the teams that Alabama has struggled with, Charleston is lower than. So mm -hmm. I, on paper, I want to pick against Bama. What do I need to know about Charleston that tells me I should feel comfortable picking them to win this game? The fact that Charleston has been here before, right? They they were a 12 seed last year, obviously a 13 seed this year. There are some differences, but there are a number of players who are back. Pat Kelsey obviously is back. And that team pushed San Diego State to the brink in the first round matchup. The same San Diego State team that went on to the national championship game. Um I think Charleston is uniquely equipped to take full advantage of Alabama's defensive woes because of the three-point shooting and because of the way you sp they space you out. Alabama has, as you mentioned, not just beaten, but boat raced, absolutely boat raced teams that are in, in Charleston's position and, and have similar profiles to Charleston. Like that, that's all true. Um, but a lot of those have come at home when Alabama has has been on the road or away from home, uh, they're seven and nine this season, away from home. Like it's not, it hasn't been good, and that offense has been good, but again, those sixteen game sample size. That isn't just the last ten games, but sixteen game sample size all season. Defense is outside the top two hundred. Like the defense is worse than Charleston's is in the in these scenarios. The last time Alabama. The defense was not this bad two years ago. The last time they had this profile was two years ago. They had an elite offense and a poor defense. They got smoked by Notre Dame in the first round because Cormac Ryan had like 20-something. They could not stop leaving him open from three. I do not trust Alabama to 
not leave shooters open, quite frankly. I think Charleston will get up for this game and do a little bit more of that. Um, but I don't trust Alabama to to be consistent on the defensive end because we haven't seen it this season, particularly away from Tuscaloosa. Yeah, and look, as much as early in the season when they won games, it was blowout fashion and it propped them up, they've been losing games in blowout fashion and it's tearing them down. I mean, you give up right. 102 points to Florida in the first round of the SEC tournament, uh, 105 points to Florida at Florida, lose by seven to Tennessee at home. That's not horrible, but that's a game at home you'd like to win. Give up 117 to Kentucky in Rupp. I mean, that. They're losing these games by 20. So I, there's I don't been know. a point. There's been a point in all of those games too, where either Bama has been close or right there or in front. And the other team goes on a massive run that rips it open because Bama will go cold for a three or four minute stretch, which is not unlike any team in the country. Really like anybody is capable of missing shots on five, six straight possessions. When you don't get stops on the other end, those runs go from being like 4 0, 6 0, 8 0 runs into 14 0, 16 0, 21 2 runs, like we saw in the uh, the Florida loss in the SEC tournament. Completely flipped those games. It's kind of become like clockwork with this Alabama team where they'll get out to a hot start and just kind of go, all right, well, a run's coming. And a run has, has come the, the last handful of games. That's something that they have to nip in the bud quick because this Charleston team is one that, that can build some momentum quickly. And if they do in an NCAA tournament environment where you get a lot of game pressure going as well, and all of the other fans that are going to be rooting for upsets to be happening in the building, um, that's going to feel different than if that happens uh, at Coleman Coliseum in Tuscaloosa. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And I think there's something mental with that and emotional with that too, where like not just the March element that's added pressure, but when you're a team that has lost in that fashion repeatedly in the final month of the season, it starts to hang over. Like a, a team goes yeah. on a six Oh run, just hits back to back threes. And all of a sudden guys start to look around at each other. Like, Oh no, is it happening again? Like, I, I think you could see that snowball a little bit here. I don't trust Alabama mentally at all right now to that point. I have some quick hitters for you and I want you to just uh, give me any sort of response to this. Like, should you be concerned or not? Or, or where does it lead you here? Uh, shout out to Jim Root, three-man weave. He had the stat from, he pulled it from Haslam, that uh, Alabama has the worst. They're dead last in his momentum metric right now. That's lower than Michigan. I can't imagine there's a team oh. with worse, worse downward oh. momentum than Michigan right oh. now, but that's Alabama. That's insane. That's ominous and very, very bad, right? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. More quick hitters for you to fact check this. Uh, Alabama has been 28th in the country since January 1st per Torvik. So while they're still 13th in the country on Ken Palm over the course of the season, they're dropping fast and being a team outside the top 25, given the SEC schedule they've played, I think speaks to closer to what this team's true caliber really is. Do you agree on that? Five and five in the last 10 games. Yeah, it's gross. It's really gross. Um, Offensive rebounding, I circled that as a spot where I think Charleston could win here. Bama gives up a lot of them. They're they're not a stout offensive or just rebounding team in general on the defensive side. When you play Grant Nelson at center, it's kind of how it goes. Uh, Charleston's very good, 46th in the country in offensive rebounding percentage. I think Berzovich could probably get where he wants to in this game there. Do you agree that that could be an advantage for Charleston that could impact the game? Charleston is the tougher team. Charleston ah. is the tougher team. Okay. Flip side. I'm giving you all the pro Charleston stuff. Let me give you a pro Alabama thing. I would love Charleston in this game if they played a slower tempo. I'm very afraid that Charleston's going to try and get up and down and run with Bama, and that doesn't bode well for the less talented team. Yeah. Uh, I I have a philosophy that I, I generally abide by, that if you have teams that play the same style, always take the more talented team, because the more talented team generally – does it well and this is a matchup that that fits that to a t if charleston played uh, let's 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 pick like james madison like that kind of style where it was just even like above average but not breakneck i i think the 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 upset talk becomes much more loud but because they play almost the exact same way i don't think you're hearing it as much because bama is is the more talented team at playing this way yeah 
And that scares me. Like I'm, I want to be all the way in on Charleston, but then I, I keep coming back to that number. And you said it at the top, like it's race to a hundred in this game. I don't think you should ever want to get in a race to a hundred with Alabama, unless you are Kentucky or unless you are Auburn and you know, or you feel very confident that your players are more talented than these guys. Now, with that said, you said they're tougher. Are there players on the Charleston team that you think stack up talent wise with Alabama's best? Not individually, not in it. Like I think if you just, you know, took raw talent uh, from however you want to take it from a high school ranking perspective, from an NBA draft potential, like Alabama, I think wipes the floor with Charleston, but Charleston has a lot of guys who are gamers who are really good college basketball players and are experienced and know how to play this style. Or like I think there are a handful of guys on Charleston who could play for Alabama and play big roles for Alabama. Yeah, I think you're right. One of them, just quick shout out, Rain Smith, uh, the Australian. Awesome, really fun guy. Some Kempom player comps here. Marshall Henderson earlier in his career. That's a fun one. Uh, he is a guy like he had 23 in the conference title win over Stony Brook in overtime. He took over late. He had 32 against Campbell a couple weeks ago. Uh, he's going to shoot a bazillion threes in this game. I mean, just going through his attempts recently, he has two games with 15 threes attempted in his last five. And you're not playing Alabama. Like he, he might shoot 22 threes in this game. I can't wait yep. for it. I'm really excited about it. He's the one I would circle. Like if you're looking for who's the, who's the name here, he has four mm-hmm. Ken Palm MVPs in their last five. Like to me, he's a class he's the guy. Like, fall in love with him in March and see what happens. Um, okay, rapid fire on these last ones. Pat Kelsey, Nate Oates. Which one do you trust in March more? In general, Nate Oates. In March, though. In general, Nate Oates. Okay. Pat Kelsey doesn't want a tournament game. He's, okay. This is his third time here. You're right. I was curious with Oates, like, do you buy the the eights or sorry, Oates' whole style is a problem when you get to March? It is not when you have a good defense, but um, we'll, we'll we'll get into we'll get into that in a little bit. Yeah, but here we are. Okay, and my final one. I think this is something that might hit home with you uh, as a college football fan as well. I have a working theory that Pat Kelsey is college basketball PJ Fleck. Your thoughts? I I, I don't hate it. My initial reaction is ew, no, because. Kelsey has not like stalled out like Fleck has at Minnesota, but thinking back to the fact that Fleck had Western Michigan at like number five in the country. um, I see that more and more. I see that more and more now. Yeah. I, I could, I could buy that. So the, I, they... do, I do think, I do think though that there is more substance to Kelsey and it's not just gimmicks. Okay. I hope so. The, the angle here for me is that they're both 80% catchphrase and I think Kelsey is like one special tournament run away from a high major job where I think he most likely would stagnate and try and bring some catchphrase with like, if you threw Pat Kelsey in the middle of the big 10, I'm not expecting Pat Kelsey to take off and win that league a bunch. I have, I have one question for you. I know we're, we're, we're running up against it. You're fine. If, if Charleston wins this game and let's say beats St. Mary's or Grand Canyon makes a second weekend, no matter what happens from there on out, if you're Louisville, would you rather have Pat Kelsey with that or Dusty May? Dusty May. Okay. But I hear you. I think you're. I think the caliber is similar. Um, and I, I like. I, I think. I think that that goes to your point. Like his star has a chance to really, really rise. Yeah. If they do something in, in this weekend. Yeah, and it's a pet peeve of mine in general, especially as a fan of a team who's about to hire a coach. Right. It's a pet peeve of mine in general that March success, like one run, swings these candidates so much. It's like. Like last summer, Jerome Tang's the best name available. This summer, he's not going to get Louisville or any of the openings. So is he still a great coach? I think so. But they didn't make the tournament this year. So let's forget about him. And, oh, wait, Dusty May's still the guy because they're an eight seed until they lose to UConn. Then they're not. Like, I I don't know. These coaches, you have to look at the full body of work. You have to look at where the trajectory is going more than any one game sample size. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I still would have Dusty slightly higher just because I'm more impressed with the roster itself that he's built there mm-hmm. than what Pat has done with this team. But I very similar in caliber overall. All right. Fun preview. 
man, I feel like I got the most out of these. We did four of these tonight, and I told you we they did. did like eight minutes each, and instead I dragged you to 15 on each of them. But I'm just having <laughs> fun. This is the best time of year. And uh, if you want to bet on the best time of year, the best place to do so would be with us at MyBookie. We have a very special offer for you. Promo code SLEEPERS. You can get a first-time deposit match bonus up to $1,000 as a new user. They've got bracket contests. You can have a chance to win a Prizes up to $25,000. We got futures, player props, best bets, expert picks, whatever you need. My bookie is the place to go. There's a link in the description with that promo code sleepers. And uh, looking at my bookie here, Charleston's a nine and a half point underdog against Alabama. If you want it to be so bold, plus 380 on the money line or over under 173 and a half points. Honestly, feels kind of low to me. What's the play here, Brian? What do you think? The play is the over. <laughs> play is the over. No matter which side you're on, the play is the over. Give me Charleston. I will. I will take the points as a bit of a of a hedge. Um, you mentioned Alabama's dead last in momentum right now. Um, I I I hate the way they're playing yeah. right now. And I, and I know I said my principles and teams play the same. You take the more talented team. I. This is, I think, one of the few times to go against that because I do think there are intangibles with that Charleston program where they are going to meet this challenge and bring a level of intensity that I do not think Alabama is going to be able to maintain for 30 minutes, let alone 40 minutes. And that 10-minute gap, if it turns into 15, even if it's 10, that might be that run that completely swings the game and get and gets Charleston out in front. So uh, give me Charleston in this one. Uh, I think it'll be, I think it'll be close. I think it'll be incredibly high scoring, but I don't think Bama can get any stops when it's going to need to. Are you taking Charleston to win the game? Oh yeah. Okay. I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell yep. if that was a, give me the, yeah, I'm sorry. I, 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 I'll take the, I'll take the points as a hedge because I, I, um, again, Bama plays the same style, better team, more talented, all that, all that stuff. But uh, on my bracket, Pick Charleston. Wow. Okay. Uh, well, damn, Brian Ralph, because so did I. Here we are. Just, <laughs> just, just two buddies picking Charleston to beat Alabama in the NCAA tournament. You got to love it. Uh, yeah, I think there's no team in the country playing worse to who they actually are than Alabama. And that bodes horribly at this time of year. We'll have to see if Nate Oates can drag this team out from the depths. It does feel like a game to me that either Alabama is clicking and they bounce out of it and they win by 20. Or Charleston wins. I, I honestly don't really see a world where Alabama only wins by like five points here. Um, mm. To me, I think it's much more likely this is a dogfight game. I think that favors Charleston. And last thing, prop bet at my bookie. I don't know if they have this or not. I'll get on the phones. Uh, if you can bet over 12 and a half times they show Pat Kelsey's son in this game, that's automatic. You got to hammer that. You got to hammer that. He's going to be the star <laughs> of the tournament. Just wait and see. Yep. Uh, that's Brian Ralph. I'm Greg Waddell. Really, really fun previews tonight with Brian. We'll have a lot more up on the channel as well. Every single game of the NCAA tournament can have a preview and recap on the Sleepers channel. Follow Brian Ralph's work as well. You can catch him at heatcheckcbb.com. Thanks for watching. Click subscribe, and we'll see you next time.